a very blessed day, everyone. Greetings to you in the name of the Father, the Creator, the Most High, Allah, Yah, yod heh vah Elohim, Netta, God in our modern day name, and in the name of the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Yohewa. This is Neophyte DAG bringing you another message. Black General Robert E. Lee of the Southern Confederate. Yes, I did say it correctly. Black General Robert E. Lee of the Southern Confederate Army versus Black President Abraham Lincoln and the Black European soldiers, Black Indian soldiers of the American Civil War in this message. We're going to address what was warned to us in Job 9 verse 24. America, which is earth, will be given into the hands of the wicked and the wicked is going to paint over the faces, the images, the history of the people of color that were doing all of these things in earth, which is America. So they would make sure that earth, which is Turtle Island, that's what it's called, by the natives of America who were there before the Europeans arrived. So Earth, Turtle Island, was given into the hands of the wicked, and the wicked changed all the history that was going on in Turtle Island. The wicked became even wickeder in 1924 when they gave you Racial Integrity Act to fully wipe out the images of the judges who were doing the good and the bad things in North America. Turtle Island as called by the indigenous people that were on earth before the Europeans arrived. Let's figure out who were these indigenous people. We go to Verrazano voyage along the Atlantic coast of North America. He sailed that coast in 1524 before the English came and settled America and gave you now bad history about who was there and who wasn't. Page seven of that book. The first landing and the first indigenous people Verrazano saw in America. He was at the southeast portion of North America and this is what he saw. They are of dark color, dark color, not much unlike the Ethiopians. They were black people as what we describe them as in our modern day. They were people of color. They were in North America, the southeast coast of North America. Let's move up the coast. Page eight of that book. Then I saw some more people and learned of those people that they are of dark color. Dark color. Like the others we saw further south, they were of the same color. You were there, dark skinned people. Not what they're telling you now. You were brought from Africa and landed in America and put into slavery. Lies, but we're not here to discuss lies. We're here to discuss what the spirit of truth. Miriam, a.k.a. Lois, but Miriam, the female energy of it, is bringing back truth to our people so we know what does say the spirit of truth. Why they whitewash this? Why did they whitewash in Job 9 verse 24? We got to go back to the Webster Dictionary, 1828, to figure it out. Because that's a year when they weren't lying as much as they started lying in 1924. That's when the liars start. The real wicked took over in 1924 when they start to change. Webster, 1828 version. American, who are they? American, who are they? Let's figure out what Webster was telling you, which was the accurate meaning of American, originally applied to the copper colored race of people that were on the land of North America, Earth. 
Turtle Island, what we call now United States of America and Canada. Copper colored dark skinned people, which are of the first root race people, Adam, the Adamic race. They were on North America, copper colored. That's a brown skin looking person. Don't be fooled. They're American in the dictionary of modern day time. This is what the wicked has changed the meaning of American to mean in our modern day time, which is on the right hand side. Do you see any originally applied to copper color races? Found here in America before the Europeans. Do you see it in the modern day meaning definition of American? No. Totally changed up. Wiped out the copper color people that were originally here and found here before the Europeans arrived here. Modern day American Indian of North America or South America. Yeah, but what color? Where did the color go? Where did the color vanish to? Native or inhabitant of North America, yes. Or South America, yes. But where did the color go? Copper colored people that were here. Why are you hiding the copper color significance of those people that were in Turtle Island Earth? Because earth has been given into the hands of the wicked. Native or inhabitants of the U.S. A U.S. citizen. Lies. That's not what it is. That was now. But before. Originally applied to the copper color races. Found here before the Europeans came. And the wicked is one of them all. The Caucasian. The Gentiles. That tied themselves with Lucifer, that red being. These are the Esau's I'm referring to that changed up the history. The wicked were given full rule over America and changed up everything. Where are the copper color races that were in the original definition given to you in Webster 1828? It's the same dictionary. Where did it go? But I'll tell you why it had to vanish. Because Second Ezra 6 verse 54 says, After these, Adam, Adam, which are the children of Israel, the copper color races, Adam, the children of Judah, the copper color races, the children of Jacob, the copper color races, the children of Ephraim, the copper color races, whom the Lord told Melchizedek Jehovah made Lord of all creatures that were created by the Most High. Both big and small, both big and small, both whatever form they took, whether serpent reptilian form, whether they took dog form, whether they took ant form, whether they took horse form, whether they took wolf form, whatever form, you were made rulers, caretakers, masters over all creatures created and put on Earth, which is America, and the rest of the planet, the sea, which is Europe, river, which is Asia. You were made caretaker of the entire planet. Of Adam come we all, the copper color races, the children of Israel, Jacob, Judah, Ephraim, and all the other members of the 12 tribes. You came from the Adamic seed. And the people whom the Most High and the Lord told Melchizedek, Jehovah, have chosen. That's why you had to be stripped out of everything. And the wicked has to change your history. So you wouldn't know you were chosen. But your chosenness is coming back now. Let's go to Adam in this book. History as it relates to the African people, as it's written in scriptures, Adam signifying red, red, the copper color races. That's what it is. That's who you are. The Adamic seed was in America before the Europeans arrived. 
people of the Gentile race that call themselves now Jewish knew your history and as well as geniuses who stole your language which is Hebrew and they furnish themselves clues as to who you are which is leading to the conclusion that the Adamic people the ones that were here in North America before the Europeans arrived they were of copper colored paper signifying you are of the Adamic seed my people in North America my dark skin melanated brown race people in North America and you were joined by some of the scattered ones that were in Western Europe that were in North Africa bordering Spain and Portugal but we'll get to that in a minute we're staying with Turtle Island the earth that was given into the hands of the wicked second Ezra 6 verse 55 as I have spoken before you Oh, Lord, those Melchizedek, Jehovah, because you made this world, this planet, for our sake. The brown skin, copper color skin, children of Israel, Judah, Jacob, Ephraim, you made this planet for our benefit. And our rule is going to start in Earth, which is America, which is Turtle Island, which is North America. That's what's coming back to you. That's why I have to unearth all that has been taken away because the wicked, the wicked has not rested since 1924. That's why you have Job 9 verse 24 because that's when that rule was passed by the wicked to take away your identity. But it doesn't change who you are when the Most High and the Lord wake you up. Because my brown skinned people, you were disobedient. You were very disobedient. Thoroughly disobedient. Thoroughly taking on all kind of religious practice that your Lord told Melchizedek, Jehovah did not give any prophets to give you. You took them on and you corrupted yourself with all kind of evil and evil laws given unto you by man, which is called Satan when he comes up with his own rule, trying to interpret what the Most High and the Lord's rule are, but putting in things for himself to rule over you. So you were delivered into the hands of the wicked, your enemies, which are which are the main ones, the main ones are the Luciferic beings, the fallen angels who want to rule over you. They are of your bloodline as well originally and they went through their transformation from darkness to light and then when they were light being they decided they want to come back and do physical things and mix themselves up with people that were still in their darkness so they were cast out of the heavens and sent back to school here in turtle highland to get rid of their darkness and find their way back up to light but they decided they're gonna stay in darkness and ruin it for anyone else who's trying to transition themselves out of darkness into light so they influence us which are other which are other Adamic seed to follow their path and now leading up to 1924 they decided to use the Caucasian the Gentiles to do their work and the Gentiles took it way overboard they washed out everything pertaining to you before 1924 you weren't doing anything. You notice you can't find any history about you. You go to Africa and go ask people, do you remember us leaving there? They said, no, no one left here. Or we would have been searching for our family members over the year. No one is searching for you because you're on your own land being enslaved 
by the wicked who took your ruler's identity, transformed them over into Caucasian white faces, as they call it, and tell you your history doesn't exist. But the Most High and the Lord told us in Testament of Asha 7 verse 3, yes, you will be scattered in the four corners of earth, which is America. You're going to be in the east, the west, the north, the south. You're going to be scattered all over the place. But, but even though they regard you as worthless, even though they say you are useless, you shall rise up from that. You shall rise up from that at such time when the Most High sent his Messiah to earth, which is America. And his Messiah is coming from the Adamic seed. He's of the Shemite descendants. He's not of Japheth and Ham like your Obama. That's not what was sent to you. That's not who was sent and who will be sent to bring you out in this time of light. Because that person, the Messiah, Prince Lewis, shall come at this time, which is the time of water, Aquarius, where man transitioned from Pisces into Aquarius, the time of darkness into the time of light, and he shall crush Lucifer, which is also called the dragon, which is also called Dagon, which is also called the serpent. He shall crush him during the time of Aquarius. Aquarius began in the year 2000. So we are 22 years in the transition period from Pisces to Aquarius. So you're moving into the stage where you shall be saved, removed from all the wickedness that these Esau beings have cast down upon you when they're wicked, changing of your laws and rubbing you out, rubbing you out in this wicked, erasing you from history, but it cannot stay that way forever. You shall be gathered again, my people. This is what they use to keep you under suppression, bondage, oppression, reproach, all kind of uselessness, all kind of worthlessness. This is what they use. They use your own Israel law. This is the law of Israel, the children of Israel, the spiritual being of the Father, the Most High, Allah, Yah, Yod, Heh, Vahu, Heh, and of the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Yehovah. You are the first created, O children of Israel. Then Adam was created, which was Jacob, the man embodiment, the fleshly embodiment. But Israel, you were created in Genesis 1, verse 26 and verse 27 the spiritual man. And this was the law given to the spiritual man. The Most High and the Lord blessed you, blessed you. And the Most High and the Lord said unto you, not someone else telling you, they said it directly to you, O Israel, be fruitful, be economic, use your feet, stand on your feet. Everything economic come from the earth. So till that earth, make the earth work for you because you are the caretaker of the earth and multiply the spiritual righteous beings that are among you. Bring them all together as a nation of people, like-minded people. That's what you're supposed to do. Not be mixing in all kind of evil and unrighteous people. No. That's not what you're supposed to do. Those unrighteous beings, those non-human beings, you should subdue them. Political, use the power given to you by the Most High, the Father and of the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, and subdue them, have dominion over them, whether by water, whether by air, whether by land, you shall have dominion over them. Those are the four laws that were given unto you. But don't forget the fifth one because it's the five divine law. He prescribed the food. He prescribed the food. He prescribed the food you should eat. 
God said, not man and whoever telling you now something else. I am telling you, God said, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of America and every tree, which is of a fruit that's yielding on seed so you can replant it. No seedless crop as they're giving you. For you and you, oh Israel, my spiritual being, this is your food. Oh Israel, this is your food. It shall be your meat, Israel. So if you're eating something else other than this right now, if your eating habit is something else other than this, you're eating for someone other than Israel. You're eating for Jacob. And if you truly want to obey the spiritual, the complete fullness, the complete embodiment of the spiritual, you have to go back to the original instruction given to the spiritual man at the time of his creation, at the time when he was put on earth, which is America. No easy way, no fast way, no mysterious way, and I can't sugarcoat it for you. This is what you have to move back to. Who are you eating for right now? Are you eating for Israel? Are you eating for Jacob? Are you eating for the Gentiles and the serpent beings? Eating all of their meat. Most I did not give you any of that. In fact, he made a contract with you. Go to Jubilee 6. Verse 4 to verse 10. Describe your five divine laws in your contract, in your covenant that was made with the people of earth, which is America. The dark skin, copper color race people. He made a covenant with you. You shall have seed and harvest will not cease that your economics, your feet, you will always be fruitful based on the earth, what it's giving you. None time it will cease. So if your harvesting has ceased, it's because you break this agreement, but will continue to go through it. But for you, you shall increase and be multiplied on the earth. That's your social as given back to you in Genesis 1 verse 28. You shall become a blessing upon earth, which is North America, and the rest of the world, which it says, God bless you. That's your moral, your law one. Always worship the Most High. Always keep your thoughts on the Most High. Always follow the plan of the Most High. Then, number four, your right hand. Fear and terror. Of you, I tell you, my people, fear and terror of you, everyone else will have. If you're keeping your spiritual covenant with the most high and of the Lord, fear and terror, they shall respect you and they shall be afraid. They shall respect you and they shall be afraid and in awe of you because, because I will set upon everything which is on the land in the sea, and which flies, fear, fear, and terror of you, O oh, the Adamic seed, O oh, house of Israel, those who follow my covenant, and keep it, and do not break it, but the food, I'm telling you, the food, like green herbs, that's what I'm giving you to eat, Seeded fruit, that's what I'm giving you to eat. Stay away from the flesh, which is filled with life, which is of blood. You shall not eat it. You're eating Lucifer's food. You shall not eat it. You're eating Esau's food. You shall not eat it. You're eating the Gentile Caucasian food. You shall not eat the flesh. You're eating Jacob food in its fallen state. Israel. Time for you to move back to your contract, your promise, your covenant. Noah and his races of men swore they would not eat any blood, which was any flesh. And he made a covenant with the Most High and the Lord 
forever. It's an eternal covenant, my people of earth. Move back into your contract. It still exists. It's still running right now. You violated this contract. That's why you were kicked off the contract. Are you getting any harvest that did not cease? Are you getting the full use of your land now? No! Are you increasing and multiplying? Yes, you are, but you're not getting any blessing upon the land that you're increasing and you're multiplying on. True! Does anyone afraid of you? Does anyone respect you? Are you triggering terror in anyone else? Because they know Israel is coming. Let's set ourselves straight before Israel shows up. Are you subduing anything by land or sea or by the air? No. Is your food plant only green herbs and seeded fruit? No, it's not. You're eating flesh. Flesh. You're breaking your contract which says you shall not eat flesh which is of the blood, which is of the life. You shall not eat. It was written in your contract that you would not eat any blood which was in any flesh. When you fell to your Jacob state, O Israel, yes, the Lord said you can eat flesh, but only, only if that flesh was sanctified by a priest, a Melchizedek priest, who anointed that meat as a sin offering only, only that time, limited portion can be eaten. But it had to be sanctified as given unto you in Exodus and Leviticus. But do you have a priest going around now, during your state now, sanctifying any meat for you? No! That's why the Jewish of their rabbi doing the kosher sanctification, duplicating your rules, but no one came to you and told you that it's your rule they're trying to duplicate. But are they? You know they are not. There was no extra covenant because here is your extra covenant given unto you. Therefore, speak, O Noah, Give my covenant. Make that covenant. With who? The children of Israel. With who? The children of Israel. That's you. The spiritual being. Not Jacob. Jacob is in the fallen state. He has to rise himself and change his name. As told to you in Genesis 32. That he changed his name. The Lord changed his name. From Jacob to Israel, he changed his name from the physical man living in sin to the spiritual man living by the laws and the covenant of the Most High and of the Lord. Make that agreement with Israel. All words of the covenant which the Lord made with them for all time, it shall run for all time, for eternity you have this agreement, O children of Israel. You fell off it, get yourself back on your agreement. Never too late when you're working with eternal, but you're running out of time now. Get your vibration back up, get all that bad food, because that's where he's messing you up, on your food. You see how many times they keep talking about food? Hear this part, hear this part. This testimony is written concerning you, children of Israel. I'm talking to you now, not Jacob, who is stubborn and can't get off his meat. I'm talking about you, Israel, that's on that path. You're wavering, but you need surety now so you might keep your covenant, your contract, your agreement with the Lord at all time. It shall be running for you unless you ever eat any blood of the beast, of the beast, of the bird or of the cattle. Anytime you eat any of those, your contract is broken. Your contract is broken and you're immediately kicked back to being Jacob. Jacob that doesn't have access to your five divine laws. Controlling it the way the most I want you and have ordained you and have created you to control the wicked who is changing up all your laws by keeping you to break your covenant, giving you all unlimited supply of birds. 
cattle, beast, fish, everything that you shouldn't be eating, he is giving it to you. He's giving it to you, the wicked. That's why I'm telling you this now. That's why I'm making so much effort to make sure you know why things are happening. Not just, not just the effect, but you have to know the cause so you can correct the effect to bring up new and good cause. Any man who eats the blood of the beast or cattle or birds throughout all the day that is living in America, earth shall be uprooted and he and his seed shall be cut off. I command the children of Israel, the spiritual being, the ones who are spiritual and moving back to that spiritual path, the ones who are ready to change their name from Jacob to Israel, not to eat any blood which is in that flesh that you're eating because no one is sanctifying any meat for you. So everything Esau are giving you now, everything the Gentiles giving you now, everything the Caucasians giving you now is of the blood which is in the flesh because they're being rolled by Lucifer and the fallen angels who are making sure they continue to give you blood so they can draw your energy from you in your fallen state. Do not eat any blood so that their names and their seed might stand before the Lord always, not sometimes, always. You shall be standing firm, stand strong, be strong in the name and in the presence of the Lord. That's what I want for you today, O Israel. That's what I want for you today. There is no limit to this. There is no limit to the days of this agreement until the Lord comes and gives you a new agreement after he has completed his judgment upon the wicked. This law is forever. It's your law, my people. This law is forever. It's your law, my people. This law is forever. Here is your contract in a summary form as to what the children of Israel in America, you're in America right now. So if you're on this land and you're a person, of color. The Shemite, I'm not talking about anyone else at this time. I'm referring to the Shemite if you're on this land in America, Turtle Island. This contract, this contract pertains to you on the left hand side is what the Lord through Melchizedek, Jehovah, has agreed to. And on the right hand side, that's what you, that's what you have agreed to through your ancestors who made this covenant and agreed that it shall be honored for all times. But the main one that you should note, number one, they would not eat any flesh that is with the blood for all times. So the wicked gonna come and give you as much meat as your belly can hold. But turn that meat down. Turn it down because it says if you eat any of that, you will be uprooted. You have been uprooted when the wicked took over rule from you. You have been uprooted when your other Shemites took over rule from you. And you continue to be uprooted now until the Lord send you Prince Lewis, but Prince Lewis need Israel to stand up right now and be the people who they are because you have to do the work of Israel. You have to do the work. The spirit of truth, Lewis is here to identify the truth, to wake you up so you can stand strong, be strong, and stay strong. And we can tear down all the sanctuary, all the cities, all the evil things that was built up by the wicked. So, Genesis 17 verse 14, just before I come off this topic, because this one is important, you need to cut that meat out of your life. The uncircumcised man, the man that's eating meat, 
man that's eating meat. We're not going to cover the child. We got time to deal with the child later on. But I'm talking to the man and the woman right now that's eating flesh. That's eating flesh. That means you're uncircumcised. When you're circumcised, that means you have cut off any meat of any blood of any kind from your food, from your food intake. Because if you are not circumcised, that soul that's in your body, animating your physical body, shall be cut off from your people, which are of the children of Israel. You shall be pushed into Jacob, subdued by the Gentiles and Esau and the wicked, not having the blessing of your father. Gone, it's gone, it's gone. Not able to work the earth and be fruitful. Gone, it's gone, it's gone. And your political power is a thing of dream. You can't get no political power in your cutoff stage because you have broken the agreement that I just walk you through. You see how much this flesh keep going back to your agreement? The flesh is directly connected to your contract. Leviticus 17 verse 14. Children of Israel, the spiritual being, I'm still talking to you. I'm not done with you because it's your time to stand strong and be strong completely with the Lord standing behind you 100% because you're following your agreement. You are honoring your contract. Children of Israel, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. No manner of flesh shall you be eating with no blood and whatever else you want to conjure up to say, yes, I, yes, I can do it because Leviticus said, Leviticus is telling you, you're not supposed to be eating any blood of no manner of flesh because it has to be first sanctified by a priest. It has to be done as an atonement for your sin. If you have your own priest running around sanctifying your meat, good for you. But I know no Melchizedek priests are here now to sanctify no meat to give you to eat and go break the contract and get that karma put on themselves. No, whosoever eat that flesh shall be what? Shall be what? Shall be what? Cut off. You see how many times you've been warned to stay away from that flesh? Stay away from it. You're going to be in that cutoff stage. Don't you have a whole bunch of ailment right now, my people? Aren't you sick with something? You got diabetes. You got high blood pressure. You got rash all over your skin. You got erectile dysfunction. You got, you know, vaginal kind of uneasiness. You got all kind of pimples breaking out on you. Your hair falling off. Your nails, them looking black. All kind of different things. Your skin kind of flaky, all kind of different things happening to you. Cut off because you are putting in substance, you are putting in things in your body that your body cannot attune to. So it is cutting off your life source, your life force to your body that you need so your body can be refreshed and you can stop aging and all the energy that the most High is sending your way can resonate on your body raise your vibration so you can be vibrating at the spiritual man vibrational level and you can always be connected to your higher self to your over body and whatever he can create above, he'll send it down to you in the physical plane so you can create the same way as well. That's why he's telling you, stay away from that meat because the meat cut off all of that and the fallen angels and Lucifer and Esau who they have recruited since 1900 have been keeping you in that cut of state. First Maccabees 1 verse 15. The uncircumcised have forsook the holy covenant, the holy agreement, and joined themselves with the wicked 
to do all kind of mischief. That's what the children of Israel have done and moved themselves to become Jacob and join themselves with the heathens and do all kind of wickedness. But your Lord, though Melchizedek, Jehovah, have warned you repeatedly, don't eat those meat, you shall be cut off. He went into the apocalypse of Elijah and of Elijah, which is Lois, warned you as well. Hear me, O wise men of Israel, the ones who know that there's something wrong, the ones who know, me man, no oh man, no oh man, I need to find out what I am really missing in my life to be reconnected back to my five divine laws. And you are going to get this message, O oh wise men and wise woman, concerning those who gave you instructions to forsook your holy covenant. Those who gave you instruction to eat all kind of meat, flesh of all kind, snakes, rabbits, dog, all kind of different things, chicken, all kind of different things, meat, beef, steak, lamb, all kind of things they give you. Those deceivers which are under Lucifer and the fallen angels command and plan will multiply in the last times so they will set down all kind of laws that they have created. That's where Satan comes in, creating his own law based on what he thinks he should tell you in order to keep you subjected to his rule. So his laws which do not belong to the Most High and the Lord because they did not give him those laws to implement no way at all because his laws set aside the laws of the Most High and of the Lord, the five divine laws and the one that concerns you is do not eat any flesh. Green herbs, green trees, seeded fruits shall be your meat. But they said, nah, we're setting that aside. Those who have made their bellies eat all that you want. All you can eat, go eat as much stuff. Make as much barbecue as you can eat. As much shrimp, as much lobster, as much chicken, as much filet mignon. Eat all you can eat. Eat it up. Any amount of turkey, eat it. They say that what the Most High gave you in Genesis 1 verse 29, which is green herbs, green trees, fruit trees that are seeded. They're saying it don't exist. That's your fast, my people. Genesis 1 verse 29. No, I did the most I created. They're telling you that's a lie when it's in your book of truth being interpreted back to you. Making themselves and you strangers to the contract that you have made with the Most High and the Lord, robbing you of the glorious promise of eternal life. Listen, people, once you stop eating that meat and structure your food plan the way the Most High gave the children of Israel their food plan in Genesis 1 verse 29, you stop aging, people. No more age. All the ailment and sickness that you have start to go away. You got to start getting back that body. So your higher self, so your spiritual over self can reconnect with you. Do not be led astray by the wicked who have taken over earth and have changed your food and have kicked you off your covenant. Time for that to done. So here again is your contract. Take a look at it. Make sure you know what you need to do. The main thing that you need to do right now on the right hand side, item number one, eat no flesh which is of blood all time. Get that out of your system. Get that out of your food plan. That's the best start to move your way back to the most dying of the Lord. Better is a dinner of herb, which is of love, than a meal of ox, chicken, lamb, fish, snail, snakes, rabbits, or whatever, which is of hatred. 
and make your vibration very, very, very low. And you are kept in bondage by the wicked who have made you a poster child for academic fraud because you were in your fallen state. You were cut off because he gave you all kind of meat and all kind of mischief to do and cut you off. Could have deliberately, deliberately deceive you. He did that. He plagiarized. He took all your books, took them away from you, read them himself and try to copy what's in those books and come back to you, making you think he's smart. But it's your book. He fabricated data. He gave you all kind of wrong data, which again, he took the truth, twisted it, give you back falsehood based on that truth, kept the truth for himself and said, you cannot read. You cannot do this, you cannot do that to get access to those books so you can read it yourself. He misrepresented historical data just by giving you Webster 1828, which tells you the Americans are the copper color race people. And in his modern day Webster dictionary tells you they're not even there. They're not even there, the copper color skin race people. Taking out misrepresentation of historical fact. Tampering with evidence, that's his number one charge against him. Tampering with every evidence that he found that shows that people of color, black people were in North America, ruling North America, were in Central America, ruling as the Olmecs, ruling as the Olmecs have ruled. He said, you were not there. Olmecs were aliens from other planets and da 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 da. Lies misrepresentation, tampering of evidence, suppression of your information, of your history, telling you it's unacceptable for you to go down that path. Don't pursue it. You are alone on this planet. No one is coming to save you. No one is coming to give you information. You are not the chosen people of the most. When your book tells you you are the chosen, my brown skinned people, my copper color skinned people, thereby subjecting you to menticide for all those years, because when you're in your spiritual state, when you're in your Israel state, the right side of your brain is firing on all cylinders. That's why it says, cast your net to the right hand side, because that's your subconscious mind, because that's your subconscious mind, which is the spiritual mind always connected to the Holy Spirit, but he cut you off when he cut off that Holy Spirit from you by giving you meat. So all that's left for you to function with is your conscious mind, which is the left side of your brain. That's why he was able to brainwash you because he's able to undermine your conscious mind, your left brain to brainwash you, but that is done in all his brainwashing and is helping you to be scattered. He created three groups of people, the indigenous people of Iberia, which were colored people of Adamic seed that were in Spain and Portugal that were banished and expelled to West African Guinea coast, such as Sao Tome, Principia, Malabo, Cape Verde, Canary Islands. Then they were sold into slavery all across America, North, Central, South, and the Caribbean. Then the second batch, which were the Hebrew indigenous people of color, brown skin, copper color skin people that were in Western Europe that migrated to North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean as indentured slaves. No servants, slaves being enslaved by the same Hebrew indigenous people of color from Western Europe who had called themselves elite because they had joined themselves with all kind of luciferic and fallen angel sources to take control and rule over their brothers and sisters. So the ones that they were ruling over, they sent as slaves 
to all these parts of the new world. Some which resisted because of, because of religious reason. Some were Catholic, some were Protestant, and I don't like you and, and you don't like me. So they started expelling each other. Whoever was in power, I'm going to expel you if you're of the other religion. They came to the Caribbean. They came to North America as rebels. But they were all people of color all the way up until 1924. The third group, which is why I described for you American because that's this group. American, that's this group. The Hebrew indigenous, Indian, people of color, dark skin color, the Adamic seed that were in North America, Turtle Island. They were also in Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. They were put into slavery, sold into slavery, transported to different islands within the Caribbean, within North America, within South America, within Central America, as slaves. As slaves, there was no need for no mass transportation of slaves from Africa when they had so many people of color here that they were enslaving and shipping across various borders because if I ship you based on the English law, if I ship you, I can keep you a slave for life. That's what they were doing, shipping all kind of different slaves, people of color, different areas, so you can be kept slave for life. General Robert E. Lee, General Robert E. Lee, the Confederate soldier of the Confederate States of America, 1861 to 1865. That's who he was. He was born and died in Virginia. He's a descendant of black people who migrated from Europe. He's a group two belonging to what they call the elites of group two. He's the great grand stepson in law of black president George Washington. They're all connected. My people will get to that. His wife was black Mary Anna Randolph Custis, the great grand stepdaughter of black president George Washington. General Robert E. Lee, he fought the American Civil War with black Abraham Lincoln. Make no mistake, my people, let's jump into this. We have to go back to George Washington to know the ties of George Washington all the way to Robert E. Lee. George Washington adopted a son by the name of John Park Custis. Washington's ward, as they call him in his adoption, was dark of complexion, John Park Custis. John Park Custis' wife, Eleanor, she's a beautiful, dark, slender girl, a dark woman as well. Two people of color in our modern day, two black people, Therefore, two black people going to have a child that is a black person as well. John Park Custis had a son with Eleanor by the name of George Washington Park Custis. He took the name from George Washington because he was loved and he loved George Washington. George Washington Park Custis had a child her name was Mary Anna Costas. Mary Anna Costas, a child of color, a black person, married to Robert E. Lee. And her name became Mary Anna Costas Lee, the wife of Robert E. Lee. So Mary Anna Costas, a woman of color, married Robert E. Lee, a man of color. Robert E. Lee, a portrait by Margaret Sanborn, page 389 of that book. Lee, Robert E. Lee, I say, Federal General George Forsyth, who knew and saw 
Robert E. Lee wrote in his notebook, Lee had a clear ruddy complexion. We're not tricked anymore with ruddy. No matter how many times you come on my YouTube and make comment that ruddy is a Caucasian person. Lies that won't sink in no more. Furthermore, O oh Gentiles, O oh Caucasian, we don't need your breakdown of anything anymore. We, the children of the Most High, do not need your breakdown because the Most High told us we shall be the teachers of you to convert you to the plan of the Most High. Ruddy of a red color, a bright yellow color, is either a ruddy red or a ruddy gold. We'll move forward so we figure out what ruddy is. Ruddy red on the top right, ruddy gold at the bottom right. But ruddy also can be interchangeably used with sanguine, which is reddish brown color, color of a dried blood. That's the color of ruddy. That's an example given unto you. Same as florid of a lively red color. They're all the same. Reddish brownish color. It is not a Caucasian. Adam was ruddy as well. And he turned out to be red. Copper color rays. So give it up. We won't accept your ruddy as being no Caucasian as we used to accept. Lies are out the door now. Lies are out the door. No more menticide. Work on us. Let yourself stay in your menticide state. Oh, Caucasian, we're trying to cling on to all the lies that were told to you. General Robert E. Lee, a life of General Robert E. Lee by John Estin Cook, page 346 of that book. General Lee, General Lee was erect and ruddy. We already figured out what ruddy is. Won't spend any more time on that. R. E. Lee, a biography by Douglas Southall Freeman, volume one of that book, page 98. Lieutenant Lee, ruddy complexion of the young engineer. He was a young man at that time. Ruddy complexion, we already heard all over ruddy. So let's go to 450 of that book. In appearance, one fellow traveler who saw Robert E. Lee, who saw him and give his own account of him. He is of a florid complexion. We already covered florid of a red complexion, copper color complexion. That's what he was. No matter how much you try to make him Caucasian, he is not. Go back to your Go back to your Racial Integrity Act of 1924 and go blame Walter Plecker for making things confusing for you to understand. Let's go to Robert E. Lee, The Man and the Soldier, a pictorial biography by Philip Van Doren Stern, page 237 of that book, Mary Anna Costis Lee. Mrs. Lee, who's a woman of color, a black woman, because all her family members, mother, father, were black. So she cannot be a Caucasian woman. They were black. She cannot be a Caucasian woman. She noted her husband because she must know how her husband look. She must know how her husband look. His complexion was florid. Florid of a reddish complexion, just like the Adamites who were reddish of complexion or copper color skin people. He was of the Shemite, but he's of the elite status who want to enslave the other Shemites and keep them in slavery. But it still doesn't change that his history was changed to make sure he is white today when he was not a Caucasian. Moving on, Robert E. Lee, The Southerner, by Thomas Nelson Page, P. 
page 274 of that book. Generally, as I recall him, and he must be recalled by thousands who have met him and who we want to remember him this way. But the changers decided he should be remembered as a Caucasian person when he was not his florid complexion. Florid again, red color. Adam, red in complexion, which is a copper color. That's who red is. Brown complexion paper, copper color skin, race of paper. This one settles all dispute that you might have. All dispute put aside, put to rest. Robert E. Lee, a biography by Emery M. Thomas. The chapter six, at the beginning of chapter six of this book, Lee was tall and dark. Lee was tall, dark, handsome, dark, dark, dark. Do you want more? Dark, dark, dark. That's who Lee was. A dark complexion man. As I've been telling you. As, as our book of truth have been telling us. That the wicked shall change the color of people that were rolling. Rolling. Prophets. Kings. Queens. Presidents. All the people of color would be erased and their image paint over to show that they were Caucasian, but they were not. Lee was tall and dark. Lee was tall and dark. This is the image of Robert E. Lee. The one on the left-hand side is the same but they try to make it black and white for his face. But it still didn't hide the true image when it was properly colorized. He's a dark-skinned man with straight hair. A dark-skinned man, make no mistake. A black man in our modern time. If you see this man on the street now, you would not say this man is a Caucasian man or a white man as they call it right now. You would say this man is a black man or an Indian man. This man is a black man. That's what you would say. Moving on, conclusion. General Robert E. Lee, the Confederate commander and leader of the Confederate States of America, was black. Put that aside. Was black. Concluded on that. Was black. Concluded on that. General Robert E. Lee's wife, Mary Anna Costis Lee, the step-granddaughter of black General George Washington, was black. Therefore, her. Therefore, Robert E. Lee, a black man, Mary Anna Custis, a black woman, all their children were black. Even though they can show up at any celebration related to their forefathers and their foremothers, they were still black. Can't change that fact. Two people of color are going to have a black child, a child of color. General Robert E. Lee is the step great-grandson-in-law of black General George Washington who fought the American Revolution War. General Robert E. Lee fought the American Civil War against black Abraham Lincoln. General Robert E. Lee fought the American Civil War with, hear this part, with, hear this part, with black Civil War soldiers of America who were not slaves, nor were they former slaves. As you have been told that the only blacks that were fighting were freed slaves, or slaves that were formerly freed, or slaves that were actual slaves at the time, or they became free. Lies! Lies! Most of the soldiers that were fighting at that time were black men because black president Abraham Lincoln was black. 
generally was black. The majority of the people that were united behind them were both people of color, black people ruling black people, until again, the Gentiles, the Caucasians, the wicked, Esau changed the images and give you a false fabricated history. Moving on, Civil War, the American Civil War, black president Abraham Lincoln of the United States, versus black Confederate leader Robert E. Lee of the Confederate States of America. President Abraham Lincoln, his own autobiography that he wrote about himself, that's locked up in the Library of Congress right now, but it doesn't change the fact that he described himself in his own autobiography. He says, if any person description of me is thought desirable, if you want to know about me, it may be said, I am dark complexion with coarse black hair with nappy hair. I am a dark complexion with nappy hair. That's what he told you in his written autobiography. He wrote himself and what they rewrote in plain English for you. Lincoln describing himself. Won't get any better from here. Lincoln, in one of his letters, writing to a person who he had met some time before. Don't you remember me? Lincoln asked. The black fella, don't you remember me? I am that black fella. Page 119 of the letters. Lincoln again describing himself as black. Not done with you as yet. Abraham Lincoln by Benjamin P. Thomas. No, it doesn't get any better, as I have told you. Lincoln, page 131 of that book. His skin was dark. His unruly dark hair is nappy dark hair. That's Lincoln, a black man, a dark-skinned man with nappy hair. Telling you over and over again. But it won't get any better. Click off if you don't want to hear truth today. Click off because I'm going to give you truth on top of truth. Milton Meltzer, Walt Whitman, a biography, page 92. Walt said he had a great view of Mr. Lincoln, President Lincoln. Dark brown complexion he had. Dark brown complexion he had. I have not heard anything reading and telling me more. No Caucasian as yet. Dark brown. They were all people of color. The wicked has changed up the information. The wicked, dear Mr. Lincoln, letters to the president, edited by Harold Holzer. Vile threat to the black nigger. A man wrote Mr. Lincoln. A man wrote Abe Lincoln a letter. Mr. A.G. Frick. He was in friction with himself because he did not understand why Lincoln was setting free slaves even though he was not setting free slaves for the sake of setting them free but only to break the economy of the south but hey Lincoln this man wrote you are nothing but a goddamn black nigger why would you call a Caucasian man a black nigger, why would you make that mistake and call a Caucasian man a black nigger? What would possess you to see a white man as they call it in our modern day time and call him a black nigger? Lies! Lincoln was a person of color, a black man. That's who he was. So go dig up in Esau's records that he's hiding in vaults and all kind of historical society which has the truth and he's not putting those truths forward to let you know, oh Caucasian people, that all your history is lies. Now let's get to the Civil War. Why they were having this Civil War? Because the Civil War goes back to the American Revolutionary War. During the Revolutionary War, in order for the new colony to finance its escape from the British Empire, they borrowed money from France and other nations. Majority of the borrowings came from France who was secretly financing the colonists to push out the British out of North America. 
That's how the American Revolution was financed. They may tell you otherwise, but lies on top of lies. Esau is an habitual liar. During the Revolutionary War, French government provided the Americans with loans. Loans that were negotiated by Benjamin Franklin. The new U.S. government was struggling to pay off the loans after the American Revolutionary War. Struggling, they stopped paying the interest of France in 1785 and defaulted on making any principal payment all the way until 1787. They were struggling to pay their debts that they incurred during the American Revolutionary War. That debt was transformed into not debt to France. There's James Swan who came in and what he did, he said to the French government, I will get you paid by the American nation, but I am going to take that debt and turn it over to private investors instead of being owed to a French nation. So he refinanced the debt, go borrow from private investors, sell them shares of America in exchange for the debt from France. So America did not owe France anymore. They owed private bankers, private investors. Majority of those private investors were in England, the United Kingdom. So even though America had freed itself from England, England now owns America because it holds, it holds I owe you from America. America owed England money now. That's the debt that led up to your American Civil War because when this deal was struck by James Swan, it only included the northern states. Those were the only one that were tied to this IOU to the private investors in Britain. They were the only one. The South, the South was not part of this IOU, but the South is part of the United States, the Union. So that's what Abe Lincoln said. You in the South, you are making a lot of money from free labor and you're calling yourself Cotton King, King of Cotton, because you were so rich from all the cotton that you were getting for free labor by the Shemites, the Adamic seed, the people of North America, the indigenous people that you were putting as slave on this land. Group one, two, and three was working for free, making you the economic and the political importance of cotton production. So in order to break the South economic back, in order to break the feet, which is the economics, everything economic and fruitful comes from the earth. That's where cotton was coming from, the earth. They were taking your cotton, your tobacco, which was your earth, and made it their own. And the South said, you dare not make war upon the South, who is the cotton king. Cotton is king of this nation. Cotton is king of this world. Thereby, the war started. The American Civil War started. Abraham Lincoln did declare war on the South by saying he was going to free all the southern slaves that were still being kept in slavery. The people of color that were kept as slaves as other elites of color were keeping them. I am going to set those slaves free. The South, the South elite said we're breaking away from the United States of America. We're breaking away from the Union and we're forming ourselves 
as a Southern Confederate state, and they were declared war upon by the Northern Union of the United States. And both sides included former slaves and slaves to fight on their behalf. But it doesn't stop there. In your normal history, this is what you would get. You get the Massachusetts 54. They were all black people. Those were the only ones that were fighting the Civil War. They marched from Massachusetts and they went down south to go free other slaves. Lies! These weren't the only people of color that were fighting in the war. This is all that they can tell you in order to not let you know the true history that both sides were people of color leading at that time. Massachusetts again. The muster roll told you the complexion of the people. The muster roll told you the complexion of the people. So the slave roster will you'll see written colored and black. That's how they describe the slaves in their complexion, colored and black. Even the former slaves were also listed as colored and black in the complexion section of the muster roll. Keep that in mind, my people, because this is going to help us to get past the trickery. Still, Massachusetts 54, you've, you've seen the story, you've seen glory, you've seen the movie Glory. It's telling you about the 54th. Colored and black, yes, they made that known to us time after time after time. But they did not tell us the other side of the story. Same thing with the black Southerners. Same thing with the black Indian soldiers that were fighting for the Confederate States. Give it to you again. Tennessee Civil War muster roll. Complexion, dark yellow, dark yellow, dark, 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 yellow, dark, 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 dark yellow. Yes, they give you all of that. All that muster roll is for dark slaves or former slaves. Yes, we've been beaten over the head Countless time with this image in our mind. But let's go to the black European soldiers and the black Indian soldiers that were in the Civil War fighting in the same battalions at the same time. This is the part that wasn't given to you. This is the part that was not given to you. In all your countless books and all your countless movies, it was not given to you. But in order for you to know where they hid the information, you have to go back to your Webster dictionary and look for the word light-skinned. 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 light skin of a light olive to medium brown complexion. Light olive to medium brown complexion. Tawny, olivaster, meaning brown as well. So you're going to see the word used tawny as well. You're going to see light and tawny. Same brown paper, but they weren't written as dark because they're lighter colored. So they pushed them to look like Caucasian, but they were not when you do the research. Light skin, light Olive to medium brown complexion. Brown complexion. Brown complexion. One other trickery. Let's clear this up before we move on because this is where the light skin trickery start. Joseph Smith, the first Mormon by Donna Hill because Joseph Smith was a man of color. All his people, the Nephites and the Lamanites were people of color, black people, black people, light-skinned Nephites. They were brownish color, brownish color. That's where light skin come in. I wanted to point that out to you. And dark skin Lamanites, they were both people of color, one skin lighter than the other, but they were black people in our modern day description for these people. Let's jump in again. Light-skinned people were in North America before, before the Europeans arrived because the Nephites and the Lamanites 
were in America, Central America, and North America. That's the region they occupied. They were here, these light-skinned people. They were in Europe as well, these light-skinned people. And the darker-skinned people, they were there. Done with the trickery now. Done with it because truth has to come forth from Miriam. The truth, the prophetess of truth. Light-skinned as given to you in the Webster Dictionary. Light, olive to medium brown complexion as given unto you in the Book of Mormon. Describing that the Nephites were light-skinned complexion. It doesn't mean they are Caucasian or they were Caucasian. These were people of color in North America. A lighter person of color regarded as a black person in our modern day. So were the Lamanites, dark-skinned people, which brings us to the Delaware. Civil War must roll. Delaware Civil War must roll, which gives you the complexion of the people. Light and dark-skinned people underlined in green. That's the Delaware. Civil War must a roll given unto you. People of color, majority of the people are of colored in the Civil War. Military must a roll. They are hidden as light-skinned people. That's why I have to give you the meaning of light skin. It's not a Caucasian person. It's a person of olive to medium brown complexion. Olive means brown. That's how they hid these people. Light skin. That's what they call them. But they are people of color. The fair-skinned people are listed separately, which I have underlined in red. I've also underlined sandy complexion. Sandy complexion is also a person of color, a yellowish-red color, same as ruddy, which is a reddish-yellowish complexion. Sandy is a person of color. Look at Webster 1828. Definition which gives you the color of Sandy. And look at Sandy in your modern Webster dictionary. Missing the color description of what Sandy is. Another attempt to lead you from the path of finding out who you are when they were writing you in as all these various color description, sandy, ruddy, sanguine, and all sorts of different what I call them, spell words that were being used to disguise who you were. But sandy is also a person of color, no matter how much you're deleting it from your modern dictionary. Sandy! is also yo my people. Light complexion is also yo my people. Majority of them were written as light or dark skin complexion people in the Delaware Civil War muster roll. Continuing with that muster roll again. Light and dark skin people, only one fair skin person. In that muster roll, they're all people of color fighting in the Civil War. And they were not slaves or former slaves, as they have put it, like Massachusetts 54th. That's why I walked you through that one first, to let you know and give you back the lies that you were being told. Now I'm giving you the truth that the army must roll the people fighting the war were described as light, but they were tawny complexion people, olive to medium brown complexion people. Take a look at the muster roll. I'll have it in the PDF that I'm going to attach in the description so you can take a closer look on your own. If you look, look where from, light, England, light, 
Ireland. You see where these people are coming from? Dark Germany. They are coming from all over Europe. So they can't say these were former slaves or slaves fighting in the Civil War. They're from Europe and they're all over the United States of America as well as Europeans who have come here and reside in other states. The ones that are shown as England, Ireland, Germany, they are new to the United States of America. The other ones were right here already and made their homes in various states. All people of color fighting in this civil war. Moving forward, Michigan civil war muster. People of color underlined in yellowish brownish color fair skin caucasian people underlined in red in red if you look at the numbers of people that are of color look at the number that's underlined in yellow these are the people of color more than the ones underlined in red that's why i'm telling you these were people of color fighting in the Civil War. Look where they're from. Scotland, Germany, that's where they're from. Germany, that's where they're from. Austria, Ireland, France, that's where they are from. All over Europe, these people of color coming from fighting in the Civil War. Be not mistaken anymore, O children of Israel, Jacob, Judah, Ephraim. These were people of color who came from Europe and fighting in that Civil War. Some of these people of color were Shemites, were Adamites that were still stuck in Europe. They came over as indentured slaves. They were being put into slavery as well by the Shemite and the Adamite elites who came over with their satanic doctrine that they need to rule over the children of Israel. Their same dark-skinned brothers and sisters, they need to rule over them. Then they were taken down by the Caucasians, the Gentiles, as of 1924, starting in the late 1800. And then all the history was changed. Moving forward, Michigan must roll. Michigan Civil War must roll. Lot more Caucasian than people of color. But it's still the balance is there. Most of the soldiers were people of color from Germany, Ireland, Scotland, Canada. They're all over the place. They're fighting in your civil war. People of color, majority, more than the fair-skinned people that were fighting in the Civil War. That's not the history you get. You get your history that they were all fair-skinned Caucasian people fighting. And only people that were of color was slaves or former slaves. Lies on top of lies, I say. Lies. People of color, light skin. Dark skin fighting in that civil war of European descent. That's the one that was taken and written off because they reclassified them as Africans. The ones that were here, native to here, reclassified them as Africans as well. The ones that came from Africa that were expelled because of Spain and Portugal persecuting Jew as part of the Catholic cleansing they, again, they as well were classified as Africans. They are the only ones that were from Africa, but they are not from Africa. They were originally from Spain and Portugal. Michigan Civil War must roll continue.
dark skin paper, dark skin, dark skin, dark skin paper, fighting in that civil war, dark skin man from New York. That's where they are from. Dark skin man from England. That's where they are from. Dark skin man from Scotland. That's where they are from. People of color, not slaves, fighting in the Civil War, in Michigan Civil War, muster roll. But we're not done yet, say muster roll. People of color again. Light, light, dark, light. People of color, people of color from Canada, Ireland, Scotland, and Canada. People of color in the Michigan Civil War muster roll. Now we go to the black European soldiers and black Indian soldiers, all people of color that were in the official United States Civil War Navy. They say you weren't in the Navy in the Civil War time, lies. They were serving side by side. Let's jump in. USS. <laughs> USS Faralones. USS Fawn. USS Faralones. 1863 to 1867. Muster roll. USS Fawn. 1863 to 1865. Master Roll, this book is in the U.S. Army Archive. Go find your copy so you can know the truth as to what's going on during your Civil War time and who was fighting in that war. This is the Master Roll of USS Farallones, 1863. Look in the complexion column, my people. Look at the complexion column, my people. Can't see it that good? Let me blow it up here for you so you can see who was in your U.S. Navy Army in 1863, my people. Only one Caucasian listed in the 1863 muster roll. This portion of it, all of them, everyone else, Person of color. Everyone else, person of color. One Caucasian person, I underline in red. Everyone else is underlined or would have been underlined in yellow. But I didn't want to mess up the paper. Because I want to show you so it jumps out at you. One fierce-skinned person. Everyone else, dark, light, Dark, mulatto, when you hear mulatto, that's the Indian that they're talking about. The native to America, Ruddy. We already know Ruddy is black from what we went through with Robert E. Lee. Dark, light, after we passed the Caucasian person, dark, sandy, that's a dark-skinned person as well. Light, light, Ruddy, light, light. Ruddy, light, mulatto, another Indian person, and light. They're all people of color. They are all people of color. All people of color. So don't be fooled anymore. And one point of note, they were still vaccinating people in 1863. If you look on the remarks, everyone had to get vaccination of Lucifer. Same thing they're trying to do now. But that's not the purpose of this one. This is to show you people of color, majority of the army in the Civil War time. We jump to the next part of the listing. Next part of the listing again. They are all people of color. No Caucasian in this muster roll. All people of color, light, light, ruddy, light, light, ruddy, light, light, sallow, right, ruddy, Indian. They see they give you the Indian, which is the same as mulatto. Same people forming one army fighting in the Civil War for the United States of America. This is their official muster roll of USS Farallones. 1863.
not coming to you no more with no hearsay or no this or no that. From the horse's mouth, from his information that was hidden from the children of Israel. More are here. More are here. More given here as to who these people were that were fighting in the civil war. For September 1863, look in the complexion portion. Tell you again, majority of them were people of color. Only a few fair-skinned people, as I have underlined. Everyone else are people of color. People of color, dark, ruddy, light. Then the fair-skinned person, dark, Sandy, light, light, ruddy, light, light, ruddy, light, mulatto, that's the Indian person, light, 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 ruddy, light, light, ruddy, light, <laughs> all people of color, do you need me to continue, ruddy, then we have Indian, that's another native person of color, Fighting in the U.S. Army. Light, 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 dark. They're all people of color. U.S. for aloneness. September 1863. But we're not done yet. We're not done as yet. December 1863. U.S.S. for aloneness again. Dark, dark, Negro. You see, they have Negro listed separately. That's the native that they're calling Negro. Still in the army, fighting for the United States of America. And they're telling you, they're only fighting Negro army. No, he's mixed in with all the others. Ruddy, light, dark. Then you have one fair skin. Then we start with dark again. Keep going and keep going. All people of color, majority, only a few sprinkle of Caucasians in the United States Army at that time. How wicked Esau can be. Rewrite all that history. How wicked can you be writing people out? of history but it was said your wickedness will reach to that level but i'm bringing this back to you my people go to the united states archive uss faraloness is one of them and you'll say hey, who exactly was fighting in your civil war armies still not done as yet 1864 trend didn't change at all Dark, mulatto, dark again, fair skin, light, 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 ruddy, see, light, 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 <laughs> all people of color, majority are people of color, written as dark, mulatto, negro, ruddy, light, negro again, sallow, Sandy, all people of color. Majority of them are people of color. Be not fooled, oh children of Israel. Look at the ones that are underlined that are the red. Those are the fair-skinned Caucasian people. Everyone else is a person of color. Doesn't change here as well. Same thing. Same thing being given unto you. The fair skin, only a few. Everybody else, dark skin, black. If you see black, you're going to see Indian close to it. If you see Negro, those are Indian as well. If you see mulatto, those are Indian as well. All people of color in the United States Army, the USS Fawn, 1863. That's the muster roll. USS Fawn, 1864 again. Dark, 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 light, light. All people of color, majority people of color. Go back to your archive, the US Army archive. If you really want to see who was fighting for the US government in these 
war, the civil war, same thing can be said of the American Revolution War. Majority are people of color. USS Fawn, 1864, continue. Light, fear, dark, dark, ruddy, fear, fear, dark, dark, fear, light, fear, dark, 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 light, dark, fear, light, dark, 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 fear. All majority people of color. People, you were the majority in the United States of America of the three groups that I gave to you. The elites were controlling those three groups and the elite changed power from people of color. After your civil war ended, that's when the Caucasian decided to move in under the advice and the guidance of Lucifer, a.k.a. Dagon, to take over from you and put you under this mental genocide. Moving forward, moving forward, still continue with USS Fawn. Dark, dark fear, light fear, dark, dark fear, ruddy, dark fear, fear, dark, 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 dark fear. Light, fear, dark, 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 light, dark, dark, fear, dark, 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 fear, dark. Majority again are people of color. Doesn't change. No matter how many muster rolls I go through, the results are the same. We go to USS John Adams. 1862 to 1865, Master Roll. Results don't change. You can look at USS Jasmine, USS Jean Sands, USS Jeanette, still the same. John Adam has a lot of Negroes, which are the native Indian people of color fighting the, in the Civil War. Beyond what they told you about Massachusetts 54, the Negroes were in all the armies fighting side by side with the other people of color from Europe. Be not fooled anymore. Negro, 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 Negro. That's what was given unto you. They were all there. Negro, 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 Negro. Then they gave you the other ones in between. Fear, then light, or dark in between. But they were in one unit fighting together. No one being accepted. They were all in one battalion fighting as a unit for the United States of America until the wicked took over. The fear, wicked, who tied themselves to these, these elites and these fallen beings took over and changed the entire history with their academic fraud and their menticide changing history on yo. It's right there in front of you, people. Negroes, black people, light-skinned people, fair-skinned people fighting in one army in 1864, USS John Adam, but it doesn't stop there. Blow it up for you so you can see it better. Negro, Negro, Negro. That's what it was. Negro. Then we have florid. Then we have light. Then we have Negro again. Light, light, light. Negro, Negro, fear. Negro, 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 Negro. Florid, fear, dark, fear, ruddy, light. Negro, 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 Negro. Majority of USS John Adam People of color, whether Negro, whether light, whether florid, whether dark, you made up the majority of the army, my people. Be not fooled how ungrateful these Caucasians are. Be not fooled how ungrateful these wicked are who you have fought to make sure this country stayed as a union, as they call it, and then you get written out. 
by the wicked who change your image to theirs. You were the majority doing these things. John Adams must have rolled continues. Florid, Negro, Negro. Florid, fear, light, Negro, 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 Negro. Dark, dark, all the rest, Negro. Then one light and another Negro. People of color fighting with other people of color. Native people of America that are of color. Dark-skinned, melanated people fighting with other dark-skinned, melanated people from Europe, as well as some Caucasian fighting in the Civil War. No more other nonsense that it was all Caucasian and everyone else that was dark was slave. Lies. No more that lies. That's done. Same thing again. John Adams, muster roll, continue. Florid, Negro, florid, light, dark, dark, fear, light, light, swarthy, ruddy, a fear again, dark, dark, light, light, fear, fear, ruddy, dark, dark, florid, Negro, Negro, light, dark, fear, florid, Negro, light, fear, Negro, dark, light, people of color, majority, fighting in the war. Look at the amount of red, everyone else are people of color. Very few Caucasian majority are people of color. USS Jeanette, 1879, when they changed the description from light to tawny. And I wanna show you this one so you're not fooled in other muster roll after the Civil War time. Light skin means Olive to medium brown complexion, which they changed to tawny, but tawny is still brown. Tawny color is still brown, the same as light skinned. So here, if you look on the description in 1879, when the Gentiles, the Caucasians, are getting ready to uproot the people of color from their seat of power and assume it, for themselves, they changed it from light to tawny. If you look, you see tawny, 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 tawny. No light skin listed in the U.S. Army muster roll at that time. Where did the light skin people go? They, 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 they vanished off America, so what? Where did they go? They did not go anywhere. It's just their description got changed to another more tricky description, tawny, to move you from the truth to that these people were light-skinned Negroes, light-skinned black people, light-skinned people of color. Tawny gets you back the same place. But if you look again in 1879, majority are still people of color. Even though they change it to Tawny, they are still majority people of color. USS Fatima. 1875 to 1879. Again, dark, fear, fear, dark, 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 light, fear, dark, light, dark, light, dark, dark, fear. Majority again, people of color. Some change their muster roll to tawny, some remain as light, but still people of color. Olive to medium brown complexion people. They're not Caucasian people. No matter how much you try to force them to be, they are not. Same thing again. Dark, fear, dark, 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 light, light, fear, black, that's the Indian person, light, European, dark, European, dark again, European, light, European, dark, European, dark, fear. Majority again, people of color all the way up to 1879, going up to 1880s. The army is usually indicative of the demographics of people, the amount of people that are present in a country or a place at any particular time. So in July 12, 1876, majority of the people that were off Earth, which is America in Turtle Island, were people of color. 
fighting and enrolling in the war, fighting and enrolling in the army of the United States of America. It continues, fear, dark, 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 light, light, fear, black, Indian person, light, dark, dark, light, dark, fear, majority again, people of color, once you know how to decipher the coding for the lighter generation of dark-skinned people that they try to hide as white in your modern day time, but they are not. USS Fatima still continue, 1876. Fear, dark, fear, fear, dark, 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 light, light, fear. Black, an Indian person again. Light, dark, light, dark, fear, fear, dark, majority. Same thing, people of color. People, we can do this all day. We can do this all day and the result won't change. You were majority people of color fighting in Abraham Lincoln's army, fighting in Robert E. Lee army, fighting for two dark people of color that were ruling the Northern states and the Southern states at that time. So we can go at this for days, but we just won't. We will abbreviate it in 1924 when Virginia assembly, when they were taken over by the Caucasians, the fair-skinned people, they introduced the Racial Integrity Act, spearheaded by Walter Plecker, to change the classification of being white as being from Europe. Anyone from Europe, whether of color or Caucasian, were white. Walter Plecker spearheaded the effort to change your white categorization to mean that you have to be 100% Caucasian blooded, 100% fair skin race. By doing that, he took away the white status from the people of color, the light skin European, the dark skin European, the florid skin European, the sallow skin European, the sandy skin European, and he made them all colored. Two categories, white if you're Caucasian, colored if you're not a Caucasian. So everyone who was white before from 1676 now became colored if they were of a complexion, a bloodline other than Caucasian. Group two got grouped in with group one and group three. They all become one. In 1930, he amended that Racial Integrity Act to say now they are black and they're from Africa if they are non-Caucasian. So that's where your history, the wicked have changed up your history and put you on another path of history, leading you away from the truth and feeding you into lies on top of lies on top of lies until the spirit of truth, Miriam, has to come back and give you truth on top of truth. This is the racial integrity at the summary of it for the purpose of establishing the true colors of individual for future. So what was it before? That's the giveaway word for future. What was it in the past? They didn't tell you what was there in the past, but I just told you, this is what you're going by now. Where you see a mulatto person, he's a Negro. A mulatto would have been light or florid or, or, or ruddy or sallow. That would have been a mulatto type person, a lighter complexion person. The quadroon, if you're mixing with this, and he's giving you all kind of different description now because he took away the status and made it himself. That is what Walter Plecker did. The wicked of the Esau, the wicked of the Caucasian mixture of any of those people that previously mentioned would be classified as black, Negro colored. So everyone got scooped into that category. And then for category three, which are the natives, because it told you, Americans are the indigenous people of America, which are of copper color complexion. So he then he tells you. So then they tell you in this new law, the term Indian will no longer be accepted for those copper color people, but must be applied 
only to those that we're going to tell you are Indian and have Indian blood. That's what it tells you. Or if any of those that we tell you mix with a Caucasian person, then they are Indian. If any mixture of the Negro type, they must be classified as Negro. Took away your American status from you and classified you as African when you are not. You are native to America. But he forgot to go back and change Webster 1828 Dictionary because the most I always make them leave a room of error so you can find your way back based on the mistakes that they make. These are the three categories, my people, that got grouped into one category of Africans, Negro. All became black, no matter what was your status from 1676. You became black as of 1924. 1930, you became African black, even though you have never touched on the soil of Africa, nor your forefathers, except category one that was forced into Africa because they were expelled by the Roman Catholic during their Catholic purge in Spain and Portugal. So you have to be gathered now, my people. That's the scattering. And that's the lie that was told to remove you as part of that scattering. Now you shall be gathered again, as told to you in Doctrine and Covenant 45, verse 25. As told to you in Testament of Asha 7, verse 7. You who shall be gathered again right now, O children of Israel. You who shall be gathered, O Jacob. You shall be gathered, Ephraim. You shall be gathered, O Ephraim. Judah, you are now going to start to operate the gathering of the children. You have been given the scepter to lead. Now it's time for you to lead, O Judah. Obadiah 32, verse 11. Deliver me, I have prayed to the Lord for this day, to deliver me out of the hands of the wicked. My brother Esau, who has been wicked unto me, changing up my history, giving me all kind of bad food to eat, and making me the afflicted one. I fear him, not the respect fear. I am afraid of him lest he will come and smite me, punish me, and the energy of Miriam that's going to wake me back up to the truth because she's the prophetess of truth. He wants to, he wants to make sure that energy doesn't reach me and the most I am the Lord. Settle yourself, settle yourself, oh Jacob. You are in good hands now. Your affliction time is done. 2013 came, your affliction is done. It's your restoration time right now. Obadiah 1, verse 10. For thy violence against your brother, O wicked Esau, O wicked ones of the Caucasian race, O wicked ones of the Caucasian race who have tied yourself to Lucifer and the fallen angel, and and brainwash your own Caucasian people. Brainwash the people of color in believing those new lies that you set up in 1924 with Walter Blecker and the president of the United States of America at that time. Lies on top of lies. Shame shall cover you. Shame shall cover you now that the truth is coming forward. That you weren't part of anything that you said you were part of. And painting over images to look like you. That those people were not you. Thou shall be cut off, O wicked ones, forever. Don't think your wickedness is going to go unpunished. No. 3 Nephi 16 verse 11. I remember my covenant that I've made with the children of Israel. Even though they did not remember the covenant and eating all kind of meat and swines. I'm going to give them, I'm going to give them the mind to know me now and to let go off that meat. Let go of the wickedness. Let go of the lie that the Gentiles have told them. The lies that Esau have told them. And I will bring them into the fullness of truth. 
of my gospel and as to who they are because uh, they should know right now 3 Nephi 16 verse 12 the Gentiles shall not have any power over you starting in 2020 starting in 2020 the Gentiles have no power over you once the spirit of truth was released back to you in 2017 Three years builds you up. 2020, nobody can control you. No one has power over you. Now it's time for you to release your power. Get rid of the meat out of your system and raise your vibration so you can use that power. It's radiating to you right now through your son. Get your power, my people. Stop being lucky for these Gentiles when they have no power over you. Oh, house of Israel, I'm talking to you today. You shall come into the knowledge and the fullness that the Most High and the Lord want you to know about yourself right now. Take heed. This is for you, O Israel. This is for you. I've been telling you from the beginning. It's for you. You understand not. You understand not. Get back your understanding. You understood me not. For you supposed, O oh, children of Israel, it had been the Gentile because they gave you white Jesus and telling you he died for your sins and he's going to come back for you. And all that da -da 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 -da. lies. It wasn't no white Jesus coming for you. Lies. You are the saviors being led by the chief savior, which is Prince Louis. And Prince Louis is being led by the saviors of saviors of saviors. Don't. Melchizedek, Jehovah, for you understood, O children of Israel. It's not the Gentiles. It's not the Gentiles. For you understood not that the Gentiles should be converted to spiritual beings, to righteous beings, through your preaching and your teaching, not the other way around. Gentiles converting you through their preaching and teaching. No, the Caucasians shall be converted by your preaching. Because you got to preach first and then teach after. You're a preacher and a teacher. One can't do without the other. That's what you are here to do, O oh children of Israel. Gentiles have no more power over you. Jeremiah 16 verse 19. The Lord though has told you, through his initiate who wrote this verse, how things are going to be. So if you think the Gentiles who have done all that they have done unto you, Esau who have changed all that he has changed on you, the wicked who have afflicted you as much as they have afflicted you shall go unpunished, shall go without their affliction. No, that cannot be. No, that cannot be. Not a chance. Not a chance in the day of their affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto those Melchizedek, Jehovah, all over from the all ends of Turtle Island, which is America, and shall say, surely, Walter Plecker and all the other Esau's, our fathers at that time, have inherited lies on top of lies on top of lies and useless things, things wherein there is no profit. They have gotten all of that. And look what happened to us now. We were going through this affliction because of what our forefathers did. But the children who have benefited from the wrongdoings of the father has to bear the burden for the fathers at the time of the affliction. So you can't go and run around unpunished. Not a chance. Not a chance. Deuteronomy 11 verse 25. There shall no man be able to stand before you, O Israel, once you get back your power. Move back to your covenant. Move back to your five divine laws. Get rid of that mate. That's the one that's mashing you up for you to not be a part of your covenant. Get rid of it. No one can stand before you once you are set back up. Once you move back to your covenant. The Lord told Melchizedek Jehovah, your netta, he is your netta, even though they hid his name and type it as that and all kind of different things. He is still your netta. That no change. That doesn't change. 
shall lay fear of you and the dread of you upon all lands. Not some lands, maybe probably, maybe two or three. All lands. Isn't that what it says in your five divine law? Fear and terror of you shall come upon everything on the land, sea, and air. You're getting it back, my people. Move back to your covenant. That's why I keep telling you and keep bringing you back to your covenant and took you down this path to know where you're coming from so you can know where you're going back to. Don't shall lay fear, which is afraid and respect of you, awe of you, and the dread of you upon all the lands. Though you, O children of Israel, shall tread upon all those lands, and everyone shall have fear and dread of you, because the sons of God have returned. Move back to your covenant, my people. Get off the net. Raise up your vibration. Practice love for your fellow man and fellow woman. Be of the Lord though all time. Call upon his name and you shall be saved. Believe in what the Most High is giving you back at this time. Get out of your disbelief and your unbelief. That's only going to get you. Get you front row in the lake of fire. Fear and unbelief and lies going to get you front seat in the lake of fire as given unto you in Revelation. And I'm coming to you today to sound the alarm because I want no lake of fire for you. No, I don't want any lake of fire for you. That's why I'm sounding the alarm right now to let you know that you were warned in the wisdom of Solomon 5 that on this day, the day we're in right now, the righteous man will stand up in great boldness, not fearing anyone or whom or whomever say they don't want to hear. They're standing bold anyway to tell them before the face of those who had looked down on you, those who had despised you, those who had you as a reproach, those who kept you down and made sure you got nothing. But now you're standing up in great boldness despite all of what they have put in front of you to keep you down. The righteous seed, the children of Israel, Judah shall stand up in great boldness before the people who have afflicted him. No more affliction because you were told the Gentiles have no more power over you. That means Esau has no more power over you. That means Lucifer has no more power over you. That means the Caucasian in America has no more power over you. That means Ahab has no more power over you. That means Jezebel has no more power over you. All of the above had made no account of all the work that you had put in for them over those years of slavery, involuntary at first, then voluntary thereafter. That's what we're in right now, the voluntary slavery. No one making any account of all the work that you have done, but it won't change a fact. You shall stand up bold in all their sight. When they see it, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Isn't that what it says? That they shall be in fear. Ah, oh, fear of you. Isn't that one of your five divine laws? Great fear shall struck them by land, air, and sea. Once you move back to the laws of the Most High and of the Lord, they shall be amazed at the strangeness of your salvation. You're being saved by the Most High and the Lord. And you shall stand up in that great boldness before you are gathered, before your exodus. So far that they have looked for you to amount to nothing. No, that won't come through because you were promised over and over and over that you shall be delivered. Don't think your father is not going to deliver on his promise. 
eternal life for the children of Israel, eternal life for the righteous men. That means whatever they're doing now is of nothing because your eternal life shall be given unto you as promised by your father. And they are the wicked, repenting and groaning in anguish of their spirit, shall say to themselves, we have inherited lies on top of lies, on top of lies, because no one told us these people were the people, the chosen people of the Most High and of the Lord. This is whom we have had in such disregard. We disgrace them. We say all these things about them. They became bylines and by words. These are the people raising up in great boldness because their father and the Lord has wakened them up. He has sent the spirit of truth already. Michael, a.k.a. Prince Lois, Shiloh, Elijah, Emmanuel, Ishmael, Jesus, the Messiah. They're all here. One person with all those names. He is here waking up everybody already. So no more reproach for the children of Israel. Didn't it tell you the Gentiles have no more power over you? So no more disgrace or discredit coming your way. We fooled that what the Gentiles are going to say. We fooled. We accounted them as madness just as how we're accounting. Neophyte DAG as madness. But no more madness. You're completely sane, O oh children of Israel. The spirit is in you right now. And you're raising up. And you're raising up. Regardless of whomever, whatever, thinking whenever. You don't care about that. You are being raised up by your father. And you are attaching yourself to the energy of your father. And of the Lord. And of the Messiah. Prince Lewis, whom he has sent here to deliver the message unto you and to wake you up initially. Your end, they thought, would be without honor. No! When that great sign and that sky open up, great honor coming your way. Before that time, you shall stand up in your boldness to let them know you have no more power over me, regardless of how much, how many materialistic things you throw at me saying I'm not going to be able to get all these things. Keep them, I say. Keep them, I say. Keep them. Don't need them right now. All I need is the spirit of the most High to guide me through. All I need is the Lord to be the Savior as he has been anointed by the most High. All I need is the messenger to give me the message and get yourself ready, O Prince Lois, to do your work during that 40 days. That's all we need to get back our honor. How is he numbered among the children of Israel? How is he numbered? That's what they're asking. His lot is among the saints. Why? Why it's not us? Why it's not us? But it can't be you if you're practicing wickedness. He already told you the wicked has no inheritance to get from me. No place waiting for them except that lake of fire, my people, which I don't want you to be in. That's why I'm sounding the warning right now. This is coming. Make yourself ready, O oh children of Israel. You're moving back to your five divine laws. The spiritual one has shown to you here that was commanded to you. God said, he didn't say maybe when you feel like it, you can do it. It's running all the time. You can't neglect it. You can't neglect it. Especially Genesis 1 verse 29, where it was put in your contract. You're going to honor this. No more skipping around and dancing around the truth. You got to hear the truth so you can walk into the truth and stop walking left and right. Center, straight and narrow is the path that you shall take. 
You can't be double-minded at this time. One foot for Lucifer, one foot for the Most High. No, you got to make your mind up. The double-minded people are not trusted by the Holy Angel because you can switch side at any minute because you're not firm on one side and you're not firm in your belief. So the Most I want you to know what his laws are. Move back to them, people. Move back to them. If you need extra clarity on that law, Jubilee 6, 4 through 10, breaks it down for you. Verses 10 and after, break it down specifically for the children of Israel. No mistake in what he's saying. Stay away from that meat. The fowl, the beast, the cattle, the lamb, the fish, whatever, whatever. If you don't plant them in the ground and they grow, they shouldn't be in your belly. If you don't plant them in the ground and they grow, they shouldn't be in your belly. And even if you plant it, it has to be green. Herbs and leaves and fruit that are seeded shall be your meat. So the other stuff that doesn't have a leaf and you still plant it in the ground, stay away from it, it's filled with starch. Stay away from it, it's filled with starch. If it has feet, it's not supposed to be in your belly. If it has fins or shells, not supposed to be in your belly. Your contract is specific. It's not making any mistake. What it says, it said it and it's there. Stop letting them tell you about Leviticus to keep you comfortable. You don't have a praise. The priests are coming back up now and they're not going to sanctify any meat for you. They won't come to your barbecue and sanctify nothing unless it's a leaf grown from the ground and it's grain and it's a herb or it's a seeded fruit. That's the only thing that will be sanctified for you. Jeremiah 46. Verse 27, fear not, O children of Israel, fear not, O Jacob, Judah, Ephraim, and even the Gentiles who have caught on to the preaching and the teaching of the children of Israel. You are the servant, O Jacob. Don't be worrying about no Gentiles, Esau, no fallen angels, and Lucifer, no power over you. Their power expired October 2020. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged, O Israel. For behold, you're going to see your great sign. I will save you, O Israel and Jacob. Let me say it again in case you didn't hear it the first time. I will save you. That's what the Lord told Melchizedek, Jehovah said. That's what the Lord told Melchizedek, Jehovah said. He shall save you. So don't believe he's given idle promises that he can fulfill. No, that's what the Gentiles. No, that's what Lucifer. No, that's what the fallen angels want you to believe. Telling you you're on your own. No one is coming to save you. Lies, but we're not here to discuss them at the ending of this message. You're seeing from the land of America, I will save, and I will save your seed all across the planet from their captivity. So again, no more idle promises. Jacob, return, I say unto the Lord. Jacob, return unto the Lord. Israel, you should be on your way to the Lord. So I shall say to you, continue your journey to the Lord. Continue that journey to the Lord because you all shall return once you put yourself into the righteous seed. Doing all the things the most I commanded of you. Love your fellow man and fellow woman as you love yourself. Do unto your fellow man and woman the things only that you would want them to do unto you. Don't do nothing to them that you don't want them to do unto you. Believe in the word of the Most High and of the Lord. He says he shall save you. He will save you. He said he shall send you a spirit of truth. He did send the spirit of truth in Prince Louis, who is the embodiment, the feminine energy of Miriam, Sophia, the woman covered with the sun, Tabitha, they all came back. He is coming also with Aaron, 
the masculine energy, the willpower, so you can say, I am going to stay the course, and you do stay the course, because your will is firm and strong. But return, Jacob. Israel, return as well. Israel, continue your journey and be at rest. Be at rest. Be at ease, knowing that they have no power over you now, and there is absolutely zero possibility they're going to have power over you anytime in the next 20,000 years. That's your eternal life. 20,000 years until you get back to a new procession of the equinox. No power over you. None shall make you afraid, I say. None shall make you afraid. You can go through a checklist of all who used to make you afraid. None of them can make you afraid anymore. Leviticus 26, verse 6, telling you the same thing. I will give you peace in your land of America. I shall start there first because that's where the seat of the beast is. Then I'm going to extend it to the entire planet. You shall lie down, O Jacob and Israel, Ephraim, Judah, and the Gentiles who have tied themselves to the word of the Most High and of his prophets, my Caucasian people. I'm talking to you. You shall lie down and be at rest and at ease from all those elites who have been casting all their negative energy on this planet, keeping us in war, constant war and strife against each other. None of them shall make you afraid ever again. None of them shall make you afraid. I will rid all of them, those evil beasts, of the land of America first, then the entire planet, I shall rid Red Dragon Dagon, Red Dragon Dagon, serpent as he call himself, reptilian when he's in a body, reptilian when he's in a body, brothers of darkness who have tied themselves to Lucifer's plan, those are also of the fallen angel, ridding them of the planet too. Ready, saw the Caucasians, the Caucasians who call themselves elite, who call themselves Ahab, who have tied themselves with red dragon Lucifer and his fallen angel. I shall rid you guys of all your powers that you have over all lands of this planet. This planet is now transforming and is officially a spiritual planet. No more of you guys. No more of you guys stressing out anyone on this planet. The sword shall come up against you but it shall end after you have been moved off the land. Rid those beasts and no more war, no more sword shall be upon the land. No more sword shall be upon the land, I say. O oh, children of Israel, stand strong in the name of the Most High. Stand strong in the name of the Most High. Allah, Yah, Yodhe, Bahuhe, Elohim, Neta, God in her modern day name, and in the name of the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Yohewah, Thoth, Melchizedek, Yohewah, who has brought back his knowledge of the outcome, because he gives us the ending at the beginning, and he shall deliver and will deliver and all the prophecy and promises that he has rendered unto the children of Israel, Jacob, Judah, Ephraim, and the Gentiles, my Caucasian brothers and sisters. Stand strong in the name of the Lord. Blessing. Thank you, oh my Lord. Forever and forever and forever.